Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Way of Grace channel. We're going to dive into the separation wound. We're going to go into the Garden of Eden in the story of Genesis today. So, so we're going in, we're going deep. And if you haven't watched um, the first episode of this series, all about um, creating relationship with God and sharing my personal testimony, I invite you to go back to that. I feel that that will set some good context as a foundation for this episode. And if it's your first time listening and joining us, hi, welcome. I'm Nina. I'm so happy that you're here. And disclaimer, this space is, is really for me to share my heart, it's going to be wildly imperfect. I am not a scholar in theology or scripture. I am just called to share, you know, my journey and my relationship with God in hopes that it inspires other women to reconcile their own relationship with God and, you know, their, their beautiful dance that they get to be in with, with the creator. So with all that being said, let's dive in. So what I've really come to witness in, in humanity, in, in society. And, you know, we as beings on earth are, are so similar. I I feel ultimately at our core, we have the same desire, which is love and belonging, right. And, and to be a part of, of this beautiful web that we're weaving here on earth together. And, the original, you know, wound that kind of, you know, separates us from, from that remembrance is, is this separation wound, is this fracture that's been created in society that has made us forget, you know, who we are and whose we are and, and who we came from, which is God. So, and this has been divinely set up, um, by, by, the enemy by, you know, whatever you want to call it, Hesitan, Lucifer, you know, it's just the design that's been had here, which is why we we live in the world that we live in today, in which we are constantly reaching outside of ourselves for our worth and our belonging. And again, we've forgotten that there is an innate belonging and worthiness that exists through the remembrance of, of who you are in the image of God. So again, this big separation wound, this big fracture, this essential, you know, tear in the fabric of our society really, really started here in Genesis in, in the garden of Eden. And I think, you know, even if you, you know, are religious or not, I I feel most of us are somewhat familiar with the story of, of Adam and Eve and the story of creation. So I'm just going to dive into it kind of in my own words. I have some notes that I might refer to, but but I just am going to share with you, you know, what I've remembered through exploring this piece of scripture and really, again, looking at this story from a relational lens, because what we have to remember is, you know, when we're going into scripture or the Bible is, you know, we get to remember, and one of my mentors, Julia has said this, you know, the Bible is like this, this unfinished masterpiece. And we have to, you know, take it and look at it from the lens of, of relationship, not religion. And again, there is like so much intricacy and there's so much depth in the scripture itself when we can see it beyond this very like logical and, and very, um, like straightforward, um, kind of lens, right. It's asking us to go deeper than that. So, so, you know, we can, look and and dive in here and you know god created the cosmos and the earth and humanity from this this beautiful design and really god's original intention and desire for us was to live in this eternal state of love and goodness and and just bliss ultimately heaven heaven on earth and you know essentially what happened is, you know, God is, is in creation and creation of, you know, all of the, the angels that are up, you know, in the heavens with him. And one of the angels, Lucifer, um, you know, it's a fallen angel, but 
um, in my kind of understanding of Lucifer was an angel that had a desire to, you know, be God or to have as much power as God. And he, you know, kind of separated himself from, from the plan and from, you know, this essence of goodness and love and the design and took a whole bunch of angels, angels with him. And, you know, essentially had this desire to be more powerful than God and to essentially shift us into this other this other design, which is a design that's more based upon self-centeredness, self-sourcing, you know, not of harmony, not of love, not of, of truth, more of um, deception and corruption and illusion, which is much of the world that we clearly live in today. Right. And, and I've heard this asked before, you know, and I've had a couple women ask me, you know, well, why wouldn't God have just, you know, defeated Lucifer and just wiped him out, you know, of, of the kingdom. And, and I think, again, if we look at this deeper, we really can remember again, God's heart and character. And if God just decided to like wipe out, you know, whatever isn't going according to his plan, really, what does that tell us about God? That would tell us that God is a spiteful God or a forceful God, or, you know, is just going to dismiss and diminish anybody who is not in align, um, alignment with his trajectory. Right. And, and that would have us see God's heart and character in a really different way. And what I've really come to know and remember is that God is a faithful God, not a forceful God. And God does honor, the laws of the universe and in free will. So he honored, you know, the will of Lucifer to pave this, this other path, which was outside of God's design. And because, you know, God is a loving God, he wasn't going to just destruct that, right? He's going to honor the free will and and the free will of us to choose, you know, who do we want to follow, right? What path do we want to be on as we're walking this earth, right? Because there is two um, very different paths and those paths become clearer and clearer and clearer as you really kind of unravel and unveil, um, you know, a lot of the, the illusions that are happening right now in the world. So, so The Garden of Eden really brings us into the story of God's design and the story of of Adam and Eve. And I feel, you know, from the story of of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden, we really can see clearly the fall of humanity in this fracture, in this tear, you know, that happened in the fabric of our reality and how, you know, we are still here restoring that, right? Coming back to um, restore the original design. And and to me, again, that is done through restoration with with Christ and really coming back into divine union with, with God and Christ and remembering your beloved identity again, right? So we can create this, this new humanity here. And I'll get into that in just a bit. So So in the Garden of Eden, we had, you know, Adam and Eve who were divinely created and living in this just eternal beauty and bliss and, you know, had everything that they, you know, needed and were really living in this design of of love, of unity, of harmony, of truth, of beauty. And in the garden, you know, there's essentially the two trees, you know, the tree of eternal life. And, and then there's also the tree, you know, of the knowledge of good and evil. And God had instructed, you know, Adam and Eve, you can eat from any tree except for this tree of knowledge, this, this tree of good and evil, right? And he made those, those instructions lovingly, you know, and, and clearly to them. And, and again, I didn't really grow up in like religion where I heard the breakdown of, of the story of, you know, Adam and Eve. And I know, again, there's like a lot of layers that go into this story. So I'm giving a very like basic version from how I, how I see it. But, you know, then I think, 
we know what happens next is, um, you know, Eve gets deceived by, by the serpent, by Lucifer, by Hesitan, right? And, and this serpent essentially has Eve question her reality, right? And what she knows to be true about God. And this is like the greatest tactic of all time to separate us from the loving source of our creator, right? Through questioning, through manipulation of the mind, through programming us to forget our identity and in, in whose we are. So, you know, the serpent essentially had asked Eve, you know, did God really tell you that you can't eat from, from every tree? So, you know, the serpent put that thought into Eve's mind, which then had her question the nature and goodness of God and maybe why God instructed her that she can't eat um, from the fruit, you know, on every tree here in this, you know, beautiful garden that she's existing and living in. So, you know, this was the serpent, um, the serpent's main intention was to have her question the goodness of God, right? And his wishes for her. And essentially, you know, she did end up eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge, from the tree of, of good and evil. And, and from my understanding of the story as well, Adam was present when this was happening. And, and Adam was the like original, um, you know, leader of, of humanity <laughs> to lead and co-lead with with Eve, you know, this beautiful design that God had for, for all of us here on earth to live in harmony and union and justice and love and peace and, um, just truth together. So Adam was a witness to this happening and, and Adam didn't stand up for Eve and didn't, you know, help her, you know, come back to what she knows to be true. So this shows like a huge also fracture in, in Adam's character, right? And not really fully embodying the, the character of God, which is what the masculine is designed for. The masculine is really made in the image of God to be the protector, the guardian, you know, the provider, the visionary and in the direction. And the feminine is, is that beingness is the reflection of, of God's heart, right. And the inspiration and the beauty and the creativity and, and the one who bears, you know, the, the fruits and the seeds of, of God's vision here on earth, right. From our wombs. So, so Adam didn't stick up for Eve. He essentially let her, you know, be deceived by the serpent. And then, you know, once Eve was deceived and ate the fruit, they became, you know, they were already naked, but they didn't realize they were naked. When Genesis talks about being naked and then they realized they were naked, that really is just, just talking deeper about, you know, they were in shame, right? They, they realized that they, you know, betrayed God's, God's command. So, you know, they were naked and they sewed the fig leaves to, to try to cover themselves. So this is really humanity's first experience with feeling, with feeling shame. Right. And they hid, you know, from God. And of course, God has a 360 degree view so he can see what's going on in the garden and he knows what's happening. And again, God didn't then abandon Adam and Eve and leave them and, you know, condemn them and, you know, send a lightning bolt down to destruct them. God was shouting out, where are you? Where are you? Right. And of course, God knows where they are because he can see everything, but, but he's reaching out, he's calling for them, right? Because God always yearns to be close to your heart. And God knows every facet of, of your being and God is not going to abandon you, right? But God is going to call out and, and reach for you, right? And, and call you back to him so that you can restore and remember who you are in him, right? And the design that you're created for. So God is calling out for them. And then eventually, you know, they came forward and God essentially asked 
you know, what happened. And, and right away, we then go into shame and blame, pointing fingers, right? Adam blaming Eve for making this choice, although, you know, he was just as much a part of it as she was. And, you know, ultimately this, this shame and blame then created the fracture in, in union between the feminine and the masculine. And this is a huge, um, a huge desire of, of the enemy is to create this, this fracture in divine union to have the masculine and feminine be, be pushed against each other and to fight and to not live in harmony because this is ultimately how the enemy defeats us. When we don't have union, we don't have power, right? When we're separated from God and from each other, we are lost here and we are more easily manipulated and controlled right on this earth. So, so this speaks volumes to like the original, <laughs> the original tear in fabric here that, that occurred essentially, you know, from this very beginning story in the garden of Eden with, with Adam and Eve, right. Who are meant to be the, you know, the beginning of, of humanity here, right? The beginning of this, this beautiful creation and design that God, you know, had in his heart for us. So, so right away we meet shame and blame and guilt, which is, you know, ultimately core wounds that we carry and, and shame and guilt often has us, you know, stay spiraling in, in sin and out of our beloved identity, right? And violating our purpose perpetually, you know, on earth. Um, and we see how this pattern has, you know, been um, at interplay here since the very beginning of time. So this initial, you know, fracture and in, in separation from God. And again, God is a God that is, that is so good. You know, God always has had plans to bring us back to union, to bring us back to his heart, to help us remember and restore our beloved identity. And, you know, he did that through, through sending Christ to earth and having Christ walk amongst humanity and, you know, essentially go on the cross to forgive and redeem us of our sins and, and those who do come back into communion with Christ and God's heart and um, remembrance, right, of this divine truth are really weaving the, the renewed DNA here on earth, right? Jesus was kind of like, uh, I've heard a couple of my pastors say the second Adam, right? Jesus was restoring humanity to its original design again. And those that follow the way, again, not religiously, this is all through relationship, are creating the new humanity, right? Helping to restore the kingdom, bringing us back to the original design and creating the bridge for heaven on earth. So, so that's a huge part of the restoration. But, you know, this shame and blame has been so rooted and we, we still, we see it today. You know, there's so many programs on earth that have us, you know, tear our union, fracture the relationship between the masculine and the feminine. You know, we've, we've seen the waves of feminism, you know, have women become just hyper independent and overpower men and dismiss men. And, you know, we don't need, you know, any help or support. We can do it on our own. And, and men have been majorly assaulted and emasculated and taken out of their power and not know how to be warriors and protectors and guardians, which is, you know, ultimately their role in duty on earth. And we're meant to be in co-creation and harmony together, right? Men and women are both beautifully equal, but we're designed to complement each other and we're designed to be in union so that we can co-create this beautiful design on earth, right? We're not meant to be separate from each other or from God, right? So this separation has essentially created, I call it like the orphan wound, has us all walking around on earth, you know, like we're orphans, not knowing who our 
you know, essentially father is, who our, you know, divine um, provider is, who our, our guardian, who our protector is, which then has made us self-source and move into more of this design of, of self-centeredness, right? And we, we see this through all the corruption of the world, through hierarchy and capitalism and um, colonization and just the injustice and, you know, all the things. There's so many layers to this of how this original fracture has severely impacted humanity. And again, so many of us are just walking around disconnected from the earth, from God, from each other, and, and just looking out for ourselves, which is ultimately going to um, burn us eventually, you know, that is not that's not going to be our way to restoration and, and liberation. So, so we really get to come back to this, this deeper remembrance of our original design and, and where we came from, right? We all came from the womb of God and we came from, you know, this place of inherent interconnectedness and love and radiance and wholeness and worthiness and belonging, right? And then we spiral down to earth and and we so quickly forget because we're born into law of man, indoctrination of religion, the conditioning of the world, you know, all of these different programs that pull us away from God and have us follow more of, you know, these very worldly things, right? And essentially, um, uh, influence, influence us to participate in sin. Again, sin is just violation of purpose, forgetting who we are in the image of God and forgetting our, our beloved identity and really what we're here for, which is to co-create beauty and to bring love where it hasn't gone before. So, so, you know, to me, every issue in the world really goes back to that initial place, the initial garden, the initial interaction, you know, of the enemy deceiving Eve and having her question God's heart and character, right? And think of how many of us are walking around on earth questioning the heart and character and goodness of God. And we see this, you know, even if you're a religious person, you know, often much of religion conditions you to question the heart and character of God, or we're walking around, you know, maybe, you know, floating around worshiping many gods and, and not having this, this true divine connection to our, our creator and knowing, you know, who, who that is and who their heart and character really truly embodies. So we're at this critical point right now in humanity in which I feel we are kind of creating a, a new, a new DNA so that we can restore this, this design. But to do that, we have to really, you know, pull ourselves out of the illusions of the world. And, and I, I love this, this scripture, but we really are asked to, to walk by faith, not by sight. Right. So to be able to take a different vantage point where we're not just focused on, you know, what is imminent and right in front of us, but to really focus on the transcendent, to look beyond what we see, to, to, be able to have the vision more of, of the unseen and to see the deeper spiritual root of the problem instead of, you know, just the issues that are at hand, which really asks us to release a lot of self-righteousness and move into a deeper space of openness and curiosity and in higher love, right? And ultimately, you know, I feel we are being called to, you know, walk closer to God. And, and my deepest intention right now on this earth is, you know, how can I, can I walk the way of Christ more and more in my life? How can I walk this way of love and grace? How can I unravel all of the conditioning that's been placed upon me and all the parts that have told me, you know, 
I'm unworthy or unloved or I don't belong or, you know, I'm not beautiful or whatever it is, right? Releasing all of those stories of the enemy that has conditioned you to, to know who you are in the image of God, which is, which is the beloved, right? Which is this beautifully, you know, divine being who has the spirit of, of God, of the living God within your own heart. And, you know, you are positioned here for, for power and purpose and to be fruitful and multiply the seeds of God's love here. Right. But many of us are multiplying, um, you know, the seeds of, of the enemy, whether it's conscious or subconscious. And again, I was in this. (laughs) We're all, we're all in this. We've all, we've all played a part in this. Um, So we have to go back to this deeper remembrance of, of whose we are and how infinitely loved and whole and worthy we are and that we have always, always belonged to God. And that belonging has never been taken from you. You are just invited to remember that. And when you do remember, I can almost guarantee your life and the way that you walk in this world will start to change when you really allow yourself to be held again and protected and, um, you know, embraced by, you know, the most loving energy on earth, which is, which is God and God's love. And that, is always available to you. And it just takes, again, a turning towards that, a vulnerability to open to that, the building of the relationship to trust and remember who God is and to understand and know his heart and character and to remember yourself as a beloved child of the creator who is here to ground and shake, you know, the earth that you walk on, right. To help us restore humanity and the earth back to its original design of other centered, harmonious, unconditional, um, love, right? And you are chosen and cherished um, infinitely by the creator. And, and for that purpose, you were designed. So again, that was just kind of like a brief little, <laughs> a little look at this, this initial, you know, tear and separation. And, and again, I, I feel to really come back to the remembrance of your beloved identity, takes an innocence, takes patience, takes grace, takes healing. You know, I do this in my practice with women through deeper inner child work and integration in which we're really stepping forward as, as that mature feminine to nurture, you know, the little parts of you that have been wounded or impacted by the enemy and ultimately to be held by God and to restore that relationship with God to help you heal those lost and broken parts so that you can fully reclaim your wholeness and your radiance. And again, the divine destiny that you're designed for here, which, which is just for beauty and love and to be a part of weaving this, this fabric to bring us back to that design here. So again, if you want to join our telegram channel, we're having more of these conversations, um, highly recommend, you know, if you have your Bible, like go in, read Genesis again, read it from a relational lens, you know, look deeper into, um, this fracture and, and kind of what occurred there. And, and again, you can make your own, um, insights around, you know, um, how this has impacted us on earth, you know, centuries and centuries and thousands and thousands and thousands of years later. Um, and I invite you to always explore and discern and, and go deeper into your heart and bring this to God, you know, ask God these questions, ask, you know, these things to be revealed to you and be open to receiving the provision and answers and truth that God, um, will provide for you as 
as you ask um, with clarity these different questions that are on your heart. So always here for deeper insight and reflections and so honored um, for your heartbeat in this space. Again, take what landed and resonated, leave what didn't. Um, and I hope that you join us next time as we continue this series.